break through a few commands out of it. So let's have an example of some very simple code. It's got three lines in it, and each line only has one word. So we've got hello world and by lines one, two, and three. So what we're going to do is we want to add a feature. We want to change some of this code. So we're going to make a copy. We're going to have a new branch with this feature branch, and we're going to make a copy of this code that we're going to go and work on in isolation. So now we're working this copy of this branch. And this is a new branch. We call this a checkout. So we're going to check out the code and a new branch. So here's our branch. Of course, everything is local. When I say local, it means on your local machine. We are not done in the cloud, we've done online. So we have our branch, which is hosted in the cloud online. And now I have my copy locally again. So I was thinking this is sort of like a copy of a copy, right? So we're really far away from editing the main stuff so we can work and test in peace. Then we call the branch, right? This is the, the copy of, of the main code, the branch. This is the remote. We call it remote because that's in the cloud, that's in a central location, right? This branch that we copied of the main code, it's still in the central, uh, in the repo, central location. Then we have the local, as I said, this is on my machine. This is my copy of the code. Now, within my, my local, my copy, this is what it is. I mentioned earlier it's a database. So we have what we call a working directory. And this is the files that we're working, that we're changing. Then we'll have something called staging. We don't always want to commit every single change we do. So we have something called a staging area where we pick and choose the bits and the, the codes and the lines that we actually want to change. This might be a specific part of a file, or we might have multiple files we're working on. And then the local repository, right? So this is we call the repo, the main repository, that's the remote repository, the one that's in the cloud. We have our local one, and this is the, the copy of our code that we said, and these are the saved versions that we're going to merge back into the, into the remote. So now I have my copy, and I'm going to start making some changes. So the first thing I do is, in my copy, I'm going to say, OK, I know I want to change this to hello plant bar. So you can see here, I've changed line two. Now, one thing about Git, it's all about distributed and having multiple people able to work on things at the same time. So this is quite a big project that we're doing. So we have another developer called Dave. And he's also been tasked with helping do this feature. So Dave has his own copy his own local repository on his machine. So the branch in the middle here, that's the main copy and um, the repo, or the, the main copy of the main copy. The branch, this is the remote in the cloud. Me and Dave both have local copies in our machine. So Dave is also working on the power. And what he's doing, he's changed a different line of code. He's changed line number one, and he put hey instead of hello. So what Dave wants to do though, is he wants to regularly update the branch, the remote one, the one in the cloud. So he does something called a push. Dave wants to add his changes back into the remote branch. He performs a push action, right? And it syncs his changes that he has on his local machine back with the one in the remote repository in the cloud. What this means is, now what I can do is I'm making my changes. I might want to see if there's been any changes in the cloud. So I do something called a pull. Right? So Dave pushed his code, and I'm going to pull the code into my version. And it's all about merging these versions together. So I want to check right, if my local version is the same as the other. So I can do this often. I'm going to do this pull. This will allow me to see all those changes Dave's already done and he's pushed. So that then I pull his changes into mine. Obviously, we both change mine too. Right? We would have to have some manual uh, conflict resolution. So we have to say, actually, we both try to change the same line. Obviously, we want communication when we're doing this, and we all know we shouldn't be doing work on the same bits. Otherwise, that would be a bit pointless. So communication is a bit key. But we know, you know we've, we've done this well. He changed line one, I'm changing line two. So I'm putting his changes in, and I can see with mine and his changes now, I've got it my local. So I can say, OK, this all works. So I'm going to do a push, right? So I'm going to push my changes with his changes back into that branch. So now we've done everything locally. We're happy. We've done all the commits. Now this is our branch. 
and we're finished, right? We change it from these uh, hello world by to hey planet by. So what we do now, we say we're done with this branch, we've done the feature that we want to do. Now we're going to merge it back into the main. And right? so it's the copies of the copies. We copy the code to the branch. Me and Dave copied that branch into our local machine. We pushed and pulled to make sure we were all up to date. Once you're happy, we say, okay, we merge it back into the main branch. However, whenever we merge back into the main branch, we also want to do some checks. Beauty of Git is all about checking each other's code, making sure everything is good and trying to stop any errors as soon as we can, as early on. So instead of just pushing this back from our branch into the, into the main copy, we say we open up pull requests. Have you ever heard of pull requests? Because it seems a bit backwards here, but we have our main, we're trying to pull our branch into the main version. We say, actually, instead of just doing this automatically, there's going to be a process. And this process includes other people checking it. And you set this up and you can set this up however you want, but people will then go and check the code. And it has to be a, a manual check and a tick box, right? And they say, hey, we've reviewed the, the changes that you and Dave made, and we're happy with it, and we'll allow the, the merge to continue. Or they could say, no, you know, you and Dave, you've made some errors, go back and do it again. Big part of Git is always we add comments, and it can have comments, so every time we make changes, we comment and say what we've changed and why. And they can review that as well and give some, some extra context. So to merge back into another branch, we we'll submit and these changes have to be reviewed by the team. Right? So they accept or they can send it back. Again, we include comments to say what they did and why they changed things to help the review process. And this is what is called a pull request. 